Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about SD cards and which are the right cards for you, which are the wrong cards for you, and why you're probably using the wrong card. So, secure digital or SD cards are used in pretty much everything these days. Cameras, drones, computers, phones, tablets. We use them all over the place. But, and it's quite a big but, they're not all the same. There are several factors that differentiate one SD card to another. And I'm not going to lie, it's kind of complicated. The science behind it isn't, but the standards and names and marketing terms people have used to differentiate one card from another can make it a minefield field to pick the right card for your application. As a result, there's a very good chance that the card you were using right now is possibly crippling your device, making it not as good as the manufacturer intended. And don't feel bad about this, loads and loads of people are using the wrong cards for their devices. Well worry not, because in this video I'm going to be covering all the different types of cards, their speeds, their capacities how to choose the right card, and also why the cards that you're currently using may be the wrong one entirely. So let's get straight into it. So SD cards have a number of attributes that differentiate them from other cards. Now the first and most obvious one is their size. You've probably got these. This is a standard SD card, and this is the largest of types, and this is used in well, most devices. Then you have the mini SD card. I don't think I actually have any of those. These were designed for mobile phone use really, and they can of obsolete now that the micro SD card came along which is the the smallest of sizes and phones tend to use the smallest size possible so you really only get the full size SD card and the micro SD card also drones tend to use micro SD cards and some small portable devices because well size is important physical size I'm talking about and even weight that's why drones like to use micro SD cards now it's quite easy to choose the right card for you you pick the one that fits into the slot that you have the good news is that the large SD card you can get an adapter so you can fit a micro micro SD card into an SD card slot and then everything is compatible. Next up is capacity. Now again that's quite an easy one. They range from a couple of gigabytes up to this is a 256 gigabyte card and there are now one terabyte cards coming onto the market. So capacity is an easy one. There are some caveats here though which I'll come back to later. In a nutshell some of the high capacity lower cost cards like this on the market right now reliability can be an issue so be careful about buying something that seems too good to be true. I'll be coming back to capacity later, but capacity is simply how many gigabytes of data the card can store. Next up, we have the generation of card. Now, this can be a little more complex, but if you think about it, it's not that hard to, to fathom. Now, the original generation is the SD card. SD card is the, the name of the card, but also they were originally all called the SD card format. And these were limited by, I think only two gigabytes was the maximum size you could get. These have been around for about 20 years now. So chances are you've either got an old SD card around, you can't really buy SD cards anymore. It's limited to two gigabytes and well, it's kind of an old uh, generation. Physically, they look the same. They have the same pins as, as some of the modern cards, but they're just slower. They're based on quite old technology. About 10 years ago, we had the SDHC cards and they're limited to a capacity of 32 gigabytes. For a lot of people, that's still very, very useful. 32 gig, even at 4K, that'll get you, you know, an hour or two of recording. So a fast SDHC card is still a useful card to have. And then the most recent generation is the SDXC card. SDXC card of the fastest. It's a little bit complex because you've got interface and you've got file system, but generally speaking, an SDXC card is the most recent generation, and these support file sizes of up to two terabytes. If you've got a card which is over 32 gigabytes in size, it's probably an SDXC card. Now it's important to remember that while the interfaces are backwards compatible, they're not always forwards compatible. So if you've got the, the latest Panasonic camera with an SDXC slot, that will also support cards of SD, HC and SD, although you won't get the fantastic data rates that you need. An SDXC card reader will be able to read every generation of cards so far. However, an older generation card reader or device won't necessarily support the most recent SDXC cards. So, so keep that in mind. There are some, again, like a lot of things, there are some caveats. Firmware updates for your old 
the devices may allow it to work as long as it's pin compatible. But I'll get onto this a little bit later too. There are some differences in pins, which makes it even more complex. Now the final factor is where it gets really complicated is the speed. Now the speed is how fast whatever you plug the card into can read and write data. Now for video use, this is a particularly important attribute because there's no point buying a really snippy zippy fantastic top of the range 4K video camera if you're going to put a really slow card in because you're simply not going to be able to record at those fancy resolutions and speeds because your card can't support it. And this is where most of the things you will see stamped on the card can make it really complex and it's infuriating. And honestly, I even have to look it up sometimes and I do these things all day long. So speed ratings. And this is where it also gets complex is because there hasn't been one speed rating from the start. The SD Association decided to keep adding speed ratings whenever the weather changes. It's mind boggling. So first of all, you have the old speed rating speed class system. Now this was quite simple and this is still used. And this is where you'll see basically the data written as a speed. So a 90 megabytes per second speed rating means that that card can read or write at 90 megabytes per second. So if, if a card says 90 megabyte write, it means it can write 90 megabytes a second. That's pretty simple. Kind of wish they'd stuck with that, but no, they make it more complex. Then you have the X rating. Now this is hardly used anymore. Good, because it's stupid. If you see an X rating, try to look for another rating, but I'll explain it anyway. The X rating is kind of a throwback to the old CD writer and reader multiplication table. The X rating is a multiplication of 150K per second. Bear with me. So an X rating of 266 basically means 40 megabytes a second because that's 266 times 0.15 megabytes a second. Who stands around looking at cards trying to calculate this stuff? It's a stupid rating. Try to ignore it and move on to another rating. Then there's the original speed class rating, which was 2, 4, 6, or 10. That was easy. 2 was a 2 megabytes a second card. 4 was a 4 megabytes a second card. Right up to 10, which was a 10 megabytes a second card. Now you will still see the old 10 rating on some cards. That just means that the card is at least as compatible with the old 10 class rating. Then we have the UHS speed class, not to be confused with the UHS interface class. I know, are you still with me? And the UHS speed class came as one, two or three with a U in it. And it's a multiple of 10. So a UHS speed class of three would be 30 megabytes a second. This wasn't used, well, it, you'll still see it on cards, but obviously it's not that relevant on a card that needs, you know, a faster rating. So it's kind of like a temporary measure. You will still see it on cards, which is why it gets complicated because you'll see the old speed rating, the UHS speed rating. And then finally, we have the new V rating. The V rating is the video speed class and that we'll see V30, V60 or V90 and that just means 90 megabytes a second. This for example is a V90 card but it still shows U3 and it shows the 10 megabytes. So it still shows the old classes and that's to show you it's backwards compatible but it's also bang up to date with a V90 rating and 300 megabytes per second write, 300 megabytes a second read which it also stamps on the card. Whew, that's all the different speed ratings. Now also with the XDXC, with the latest generation of cards, you also get different pins on the back, UHS 1 and UHS 2. That's the interface type. But if you look at that row of pins on the back there, you can see there's a second row beneath them. Now the older generations of cards only had that top row of pins, but more recent cards, they've introduced a second row of pins. That's called UHS 2 and is part of the SDXC generation of cards. That allows them to work much faster, which is why you can't read those new SDXC cards in an old reader because they don't have that second row of pins in them. But you can read them at a slower rate because it doesn't have the pins or you can read slower cards without that second row of pins. They just add speed. They don't give you any extra stuff. I don't think they do anyway. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong here. And that's called UHS 2. That's the interface type. Not to be confused with the UHS speed class, which is the U. <laughs> Oh boy. So that's a lot to take on, right? And this is where, generally speaking, if you're in the market for new cards right now, I would go with just the V rating and the UHS XC classes, which are a little more expensive, but not that much. But at least you know you're forward compatible. You've got the latest generation of card, which is more likely to work with your newer cameras. And there is the problem. If you've bought um, a 4K camera that records in HDR with a high bit rate, and you've only 
only put an old card in because you had it knocking about, you were crippling that, ca that camera. You were not going to be able to record at those fancy high resolutions, certainly not reliably. You're going to get data dropouts, so you might not even be able to record at all because the card that you've put in is simply not fast enough to write data to it. You could actually be slowing down your device by putting the wrong card in. That's not an upgrade. For the sake of a few bucks more, you can get a faster card that's matched to the interface to the speed of the machine. And in fact, an even faster card, if your device supports it, may improve the performance of the machine. So it's very important to make sure that the card that you're putting into the device matches at least the minimum speed requirements. And honestly, ideally aim for higher. And there's more to it than that too. I'll plug these memory cards into my computer to read them. Now, if I was to plug that into an old timey card reader, minutes and minutes, 20, 30 minutes, just reading that data off the card. So going back to what I mentioned earlier about capacity, which cards should you buy? Well, the easiest answer is to go for a big name brand like Sony, like Kingston, like Lexa. They're reliable, they're fast, but they are more expensive. However, there's a good reason for that. A data, 256 gigabyte card. I bought two of these for my GH5. These are classed as V90. They're SDXC cards, which means they're the fastest cards currently available. The UHS-2, if you've been doing your homework, you'll know what that means. They can support the high speed data write required from a Panasonic GH5 in 4K at a high frame rate in HDR to in a full frame file, except that they can't. Not quite. Luckily, the camera uses two card slots. So if one of the cards fails, then it will back up to the other card. And several times when I've tried to record at the camera's highest possible speed, these haven't quite kept up. And a number of times I've had to use the backup card just because the data on these has become corrupt. So for a 256 gig card, it's cheap. It's actually cheaper than the Sony 128 gig. But guess which cards have never failed? The Sonys. I'd be comfortable going out without an even backup card on, on these because they're so reliable, but they're a lot more expensive. So my advice is don't go for the cheapest car that you can get. Go for a name brand at the highest capacity you can afford. So keep that in mind. I put 128 gig cards in now because they're a little more affordable. Sony don't do the 256 cards yet, or they may be just about to come out, but they're going to be reliable when they do. So I've stopped using the cheaper cards just because I had so many problems with data corruption, whereas with the high end, high branded cards, they work all day. If you've done a few videos, you know what a pain it is to lose your video or your sound data, okay? You know what I'm saying? So that is pretty much it. That is everything I know about SD cards. Hopefully now you've got enough information to know that you're going out and you're buying the right card for your camera. If you're still not sure, by all means, leave a comment below. Let me know what device you're gonna use and I'll tell you what the best card is for that device. I've also put some links in the description to the cards that I use, including the card readers I use. And hopefully you can now go forth and buy the right cards for your gear and you'll be a little less confused as to what it's all about. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love to get your feedback. Even if it's a dislike, that's fine. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the very next show. Bye.